So for today's video, we will be talking about the axial skeleton. The skeletal system is generally divided into two, the axial skeleton and the appendicular skeleton. The axial skeleton is comprised of the skull, which is made up of several paired and unpaired bones, which protects the brain and support the structures of the face, and vertebra, which houses the spinal cord. Apart from that, the vertebra together with the ribs and the sternum forms the thoracic cavity which houses the vital organs such as the heart and the lungs. Let's review the parts of the skull. The nasal bone is the longitudinal bone forming the roof of the nasal cavity. The incisive bone or premaxilla supports the upper incisor and contributes to the formation of the palatin fissure. This is the most rostral bone. Maxilla is the upper jaw bone. It forms osseous lateral walls of the face. This is the major part of the hard palate. Next is the zygomatic. It forms the cheekbone. Next is the lacrimal bone or prefrontal bone. It lies at the medial surface of the orbit which houses the eye. Next is the temporal. This is the most ventral part of the bone forms the rounded prominence called tympanic bulla. It houses the structure of the middle ear. The frontal is the rostral part of the roof of the cranial cavity. In animals that possess horn, cornual process arise from the frontal bone. In cattle and pigs, it forms the entire roof. Next is the parietal. Together with the frontal, it forms the roof of the cranial cavity, except in pig and cattle. Then the occipital, this is the most caudal bone of the skull. It contains the foramen magnum through the spinal cord pass. Comparing the skulls of the animals. In horse, there is a facial crest in the maxilla. The orbit is complete. In pig, there is a unique bone in the nose called os rostri. The frontal bone forms the roof of the cranium and the orbit is incomplete. In the cattle, the frontal bone forms the roof of the cranium and has a facial tuber in the maxilla. The orbit is complete. The horned animals have cornual process and the median sagittal crest is absent. Next is the mandible. The mandible composed of two halves. There is a body and the ramus. In the dog, it has a deep mesoteric fossa with angular process, short diastema, long and wide coronoid process. In the cattle, it has a wide and long diastema, long and narrow coronoid process, and the head of condyloid process is concave. The mandible of the pig has a short coronoid process, almost the same height with the condyloid process. It has a massive body. There is also tusk present. This, is, this teeth is continuously growing. In the horse, it has a wide and long diastema. The head of the condyloid process is convex. The vertebral column is composed of a number of unpaired bones arranged in a series along in the midline of the body and extending from the base of the skull to the tip of the tail. The cervical vertebrae is also called as neck vertebrae. The thoracic vertebrae is also called as back vertebrae. The lumbar vertebrae is also called as loin vertebrae. The sacral vertebrae is also called as group vertebrae. And the caudal vertebrae is also called as coccygeal vertebrae. Here is the vertebral formula of animals. The parts of the typical vertebra includes the body, the arc, and the process. The body is a cylindrical mass forming the ventral part of the vertebra and the floor of the vertebral foramen. The arc completes the vertebral foramen dorsally. The cranial and caudal articular process forms the joints between adjacent vertebrae in the thoracic region. They also form joints with the ribs. The spinous process projects dorsally from the arc of the vertebra. The transverse process projects laterally from the arc. 
The cervical vertebrae have well-developed articular process to accommodate the large range of motion of the neck. All domestic mammals have seven cervical vertebrae. They can be recognized by the fact that they are massive and quadrangular. The atlas is the first cervical vertebra. The spinal process is absent, the occipital bone rests upon the atlas. And the atlas is named after the Greek god Atlas who held up the world on his shoulder. Comparing the atlas of the animals. In the dog, the ulnar foramen is absent. Instead, there is an ulnar notch or incisures. In the cattle, the transverse foramen is absent. In the pig, the transverse foramen is situated in the posterior border of the wing. In the horse, the three foramina is present. The axis is the second cervical, also called as epistropeus or dentata. The body of the axis features a cranial projection called dens or the odontoid process, which articulates with the atlas in a pivot joint. Comparing the axis of the animals, in the canine, the dens are typically tooth-like. In the cattle, the dens are characteristically spout-shaped. In the pig, the dents are short and has a high spine directed posteriorly. In the horse, the spinal process is bifid. The thoracic or back vertebrae is normally 13 in number and characterized by tall spinal process and short body. They articulate with the ribs through the coastal fovea, the head of the rib, and the transverse fovea, the tubercle of the rib. In the thoracic, there is an anteclinal. This vertebrae is the most vertically oriented spine. All spine cranial to this vertebrae are inclined caudally and all spines caudal to it is inclined cranially. Comparing the thoracic vertebra of animals, in the canine, the first spine is the tallest. The thoracic vertebrae is wide and compressed dorsoventrally. The anticlinal in the dog is the T11. In the pig, the thoracic vertebrae is long body, constricted in the middle. The anticlinal is the T10. There is a total of 14 to 15 thoracic vertebrae. In the cattle, the thoracic vertebrae is larger than in horse. The anticlinal is the T13. There is a total of 13 thoracic vertebrae. In the horse, the first spine is small. There is a small transverse process. The anticlinal is the T16 and there is a total of 18 thoracic vertebrae. The lumbar vertebrae is also called as loin vertebrae. It has a large flat or plate-like transverse process that project laterally. The spinous process are similar to those of the last few thoracic vertebrae. They can be distinguished from the last thoracic vertebrae by the lack of costal facets. The regional characteristic is it is a short and flattened body with expanded transverse process. Comparing the lumbar of animals. In the canine, it has 7 lumbar vertebrae. In pig, there is 6 to 7 lumbar vertebrae. In canine and pig, the transverse process are oriented cranioventrally. In the cattle, there is 6 lumbar vertebrae, and in the horse, there is 6 lumbar vertebrae. In cattle and horse, the transverse process is horizontally inclined. The sacral vertebrae or the croup vertebrae are fused to form a single wedge-shaped bone. The sacrum which articulates with the last lumbar vertebra cranially, the first caudal vertebra caudally, and the wings of ilium cranio-laterally. Generally, the sacrum have two surfaces, two borders, base, and the apex. Comparing the sacrum of the animals, in the canine, it has three separate spines, unfused spinous process. In the pig, the spinous process are replaced by undistinct crests. In the cattle, the spinal process are fused to form median sacral crest. In the horse, there are five separate spines, unfused spinous process. There are three sacral vertebrae in the canine. There are four sacral vertebrae in the pig. 
there are five sacral vertebrae in the cattle and there are five sacral vertebrae in the horse. The caudal bone forms the bony basis for the tail. Depending on the length of the tail, the number varies considerably from species to species. Next is the ribs or the costae. It forms the lateral walls of the bony thorax. Usually, the number of pairs of the ribs is the same as the thoracic vertebrae. The sternal or true ribs articulate with the sternum by means of its costal cartilage, also known as immobile ribs. For the sternal or the false rib, a cartilage are fused to form the costal arc, also known as respiratory rib because they are mobile. In the floating ribs, there is no connection with the sternum, no cartilage is present. It is usually the last rib found only in dog and man. There is always one more pair of sternal rib than the sternibrae. The head of the rib articulates with the body of the vertebra of the same serial number and that one in front. The tubercle of the rib articulates with the transverse process of the vertebra of the same serial number. The first rib is distinguished because it is the shortest. Comparing the ribs of the animals, in the dog, it is cylindrical shaft. In the pig, it is narrow shaft and distinct angle. In the horse, it is narrow shaft and strongly curved in dorsal third. In the cattle, it is wide, flat shaft and long neck. There are 13 ribs present in the dog, 14 in the pig, 18 in the horse, and 13 in the cattle. For the sternum, it forms the ventrum of the bony thorax and gives attachment to the coastal reach of the ribs as well as providing a bony origin for the pectoral muscle. The sternum consists of individual bones called the sternibrae that tends to fuse as age advances. Manubrium is the first segment of the sternum. The body is the middle portion. The siphoid process is the last segment of the sternum it holds the siphoid cartilage. The hyoid apparatus lies in the intermandibular space and consists of a number of line bones and cartilage. It is the means by which the larynx and the tongue are suspended from the skull. It is composed of the following bones. The stylohyoid articulates rostrally with the epihyoid and with the styloid process of the temporal bone caudally. It is the largest and often called as the great cornua. The epihyoid is a small rounded bone situated between the stylohyoid and serratohyoid. It is also known as the middle cornua. The serratohyoid located in between the epihyoid and basihyoid. It is also called as small cornua. The basihyoid is the only unpaired bone and is considered as the base. It is short and flattened and lies in a transverse plane. The tyrohyoid articulate caudally with the rostral cornua of the thyroid cartilage of the larynx. The lingual process is the rostral projection of the basihyoid bone into the tongue. In the horse, it has a long lingual process while short in the ox. Thank you so much for watching and this video is sponsored by Patreon subscribers. Join me in making more veterinary educational content in a creative way. In return, you can have an access to all of my vet digital files including my scanned notes and digital layout on Patreon. Your generous contribution will give justice for all of my hard work so I can have more time to create artsy notes for your enjoyment and education. Thank you so much again for watching and see you on my next video. I am Dr. Leatrice. I'm a veterinarian and an artist. Bye-bye!